been meeting you here, Lewis. <laughs> this is a priority call to all Justice League members. A woman is missing. She's one of ours. Her name is Lois Lane. Lois? My masterpiece! <laughs> You took his wife, you took his unborn child, and his city. Why? After all these years, Batsy, you really need reasons from me? What happened to Metropolis can never be allowed to occur again. You'll throw away everything the Justice League stands for. <laughs> Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad, on Instagram at Movies TV Mad Triple Five, and at TikTok, of course, at Movies TV Mad Triple X. And welcome to Thursday's edition of the DCEU Daily. So, as you just saw, I was reacting to the brand new trailer of the brand new animated movie Injustice. Of course, this is an adaption from the game, um, from the graphic novels. And Injustice is a very, very popular thing. I mean, the trailer looks like they've captured it note by note. I don't think they're really changing anything. Look, I am excited for the animated movie, but we mustn't forget that Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 was pretty much Injustice. Yeah, it's, it, it's Darkseid that kills Lois, um, not the Joker, but at the end of the day, it, it still plays out pretty much the same. You know, Superman becomes a killer. Again, Zack actually has Superman under the control, the mind control of Darkseid. So it's a bit different. In terms of injustice, Superman's just gone fucking insane because basically his wife, Lois, and you know, is dead and she lost their child. So, you know, anyone would go loopy after that. So it's a great story either way. But it's interesting to me how WB are more than happy to green light an animated adaption of that story. But Zack Snyder was going to do a Justice League 2, which is pretty much that story. The nightmare future is the Injustice world. And they were basically, Zack's already told us, they were basically going to spend the whole film mostly in the nightmare future. Give or take a few sequences. I'm assuming this is... This would have been planned to be at least a three hour movie or whatever it would have been. I mean, it would have been very long. Maybe it, I think it would have been slightly shorter than Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut. But just imagine, Snyder would have had the time to perfect his movie. You know, at the end of the day, he shot the Snyder Cut back in 2015, 2016. It's amazing, really. They were telling him not to do stuff. He was still shooting it. Basically, as he said before, shooting all his bullets. And lucky he did, else we would never have got the Snyder Cut. And then what he was able to achieve with Weta, the special effects company, was sensational. But imagine Snyder having all the time in the world to do a Justice League 2 and a Justice League 3. That, I mean, to have this kind of Injustice live-action movie, and no one is more capable of doing an awesome live-action Injustice movie but Zack Snyder. So I think it would have been amazing. I think it's, it's exactly the kind of thing I would have wanted to see. And basically, because the Injustice games do the story element of the game as well, and that's animated as well, you have to ask the question, what would have been better here? Um, you know, doing an animated kind of Injustice adaption or, you know, green lighting Zack Snyder's Justice League 2. I know what I would have prefer, preferred, and it, it definitely... Um, a live action, you know, Injustice, which is basically, as I've already said, Justice League 2. So I'm still excited for the animated movie. I just think it's a bit of a shame because um, for me, it seems a little bit small minded. I know Snyder hasn't helped the situation. I know going forward in terms of the central universe, having Snyder run the entire DC Extended Universe isn't a good business plan. I understand all of that. But if you're setting up a multiverse strategy, as I say, it seems rather small-minded not to give Snyder a place on it. I mean, I'm one of those people who thinks um, 
the DC live action universe is poorer without Snyder, even if he's not running the central universe. I mean, you have to ask the question. I mean, I've said before, a director running a franchise, a huge one like the DCEU, probably isn't the best of ideas. But then you ask the question, don't you? Who's got more DC knowledge, Walter Hamada or Zack Snyder? It's ingrained in the man. So that's an interesting thing as well. I'm not saying that, you know, um, Walter shouldn't be running it. I mean, personally, I mean, look, I, I like Walter Hamada and I like his multiverse strategy. But the point being is you do need someone who actually understands these DC characters and these DC universes. I suppose if you're a studier of something and you're intelligent enough, you can still create um, a really great franchise. Thus far, it's been a mix and match. It hasn't been any more successful, maybe even slightly less successful than the Snyderverse. I mean, the Hamadaverse hasn't really achieved too much at this point. He's had a couple of wins. I mean, he's had three wins, really, with Shazam, Joker movie and Aquaman, which is not bad, but he needs to create an interconnected universe. It's obviously right. Listen, it's for me, it's still a crying shame that Snyder wasn't allowed to finish his arc. But I don't really blame the studio, whether the, it was, it's the people who ran it before or now. And I'll tell you why. It's not really their fault. They were just being reactionary because that's what companies do, because they want to make top dollar. They want to please everyone and they want positive, you know, positive feedback, not the negative they got with the Snyderverse. And so, you know, you've got people on the Internet, Internet slaughtering Zack Snyder and his vision. And, you know, they're seeing the box office for it. But again, his box office wasn't so bad. And it would have been interesting to see without Justice League. In back, go back to 2017, what the Snyder Cut would have done in theatres instead of Justice League. I think it would have made more than Justice League. I think there's no question about that. I don't even think there's a debate there. I, I really don't. I think that that film could have made around 800 million. For sure. For sure. I think people would have seen it. He would never have been allowed to make a four hour movie. That's for sure. So I think things ended up better for us, the consumer, the viewers and the fans, because we got to see his uncut vision of Justice League, which I think is really, really good. But I think in, in terms of what it would have been back in 2017, if they allowed him, I think it could have been at least the length of um, the ultimate edition of BVS, well, which I think would have been fine. Um, you would have lost an hour, but, you know, ed you know, clever editing, we would have been okay there. But it would have been an amazing movie, and it would have been an epic. I mean, Endgame is three hours long, and I don't even think Endgame needs to be three hours long. But they tried to create, you know, this is the studio. The studio were happy for a three-hour movie. Fake wanted a three-hour movie. It worked out for him. I mean, you could have cut that movie down easily to about two and a half hours, maybe more, because... There's not much in that movie. There's not really much to the plot apart from, you know, going back in time, changing a few things and then fighting Thanos for the final time. So it's, it's, I suppose it works for those fans. I still think Infinity War is better um, than Endgame, but that's just my opinion. But, you know, Zack Snyder was doing his own thing, you know, like the MCU were. And for me, when you look at, you, you kind of scratch your head, don't you? You think, well, they're doing an animated Injustice, Injustice adaption and Zack Snyder was going to do a live action version. It seems a bit preposterous to me. It'd be interesting what people make of the animated movie because recently I think the animated movies haven't been great. I think they've been somewhat underwhelming. I think the, um, what was it? I forgot. They did a two-parter recently, which I purchased, which I haven't even seen yet. I think people kind of liked that. But I think mostly those ones have recently, the animated franchise has been a bit middling as far as I'm concerned. But I just think Snyder doesn't do anything middling or underwhelming. You know, Snyder goes fully charged into it like a ball and really gives you what he wants to give you. It's his, he gives you his definitive vision. And to see his definitive vision of injustice would have been interesting. Again, it's not a copy and paste and there's no reason why it should be. It's his own take, but it's there. He was going to do it. He'd still be willing to do it now. And obviously the great thing about his version of Injustice, it, it's chapterized and it's quite different. So we start off with Man of Steel, BVS, his Justice League, 
Justice League 2, as we said, is pretty much an injustice adaption, just like BVS is a kind of um, the Dark Knight Returns kind of adaption, but at nowhere near copy and pasting it, but it's a kind of version of that story, and I think he did a good job with that. It's his own, it's his own version of it. I would have loved to have seen a copy and paste of that story, but I think it's just as good BVS. And so basically BVS and Justice League 2 are the same thing. It's an adaption of a, of a graphic novel, but Snyder gives his take to it, which I think is great because you want to see other, you know, you want to see comic book fans adapting their favorite graphic novels and giving it a little twist around. You know, Alan Miles, you know, adapted Smallville and put their twist on the origins of Superman, which I think is always great. As long as you, I mean, it's difficult because Snyder did upset the purists. But Snyder wasn't saying this is the only way Superman should be. This is the way I see things. I'm putting these people in the real world and I'm saying people wouldn't react really well to these gods, which is absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned. So he started his arc off. And again, it's kind of a shame that it's not happening because there is, there is a deeper story to tell there. And it doesn't look like it's happening right now. And as I always say, who knows what the future holds? But I do think it's, it's what happened is a tragedy because there's an, as I say, there's an epic story to tell there. And, you know, there's not many auteurs like Snyder who want to come into a comic book universe and give their take to it. And so I think what, what, what happened with the Snyderverse from the beginning is Warner Brothers are used to giving auteurs freedom, giving them movies to do whatever they want to. So I think at first they were probably quite happy to do this. It's only when the blowback started they decided, well, maybe we should be doing things like the MCU. Now, if that's the plan for Walter Hamada, it's never going to work. The DC Universe can never be the MCU. It won't work with these characters. It's, I mean, in a lot of ways, what Fabe did was purely a happy accident. He did the first few origin solo movies. They kind of worked. Some of them didn't. There was hate for Fabe. And then Avengers came out, the first live action kind of team up movie, and people thought, wow, I mean, that's not fair because the X-Men movies, although they're a team anyway, aren't they? Um, but yeah, that was kind of the first one. Of, and I mean, X-Men and X-Men 2 is great, isn't it? Maybe even better, in my opinion, than Avengers, any of the Avengers movies. Just my opinion, by the way, especially the first one. But listen, happy accident. Now, all of a sudden, since Avengers onwards, people love it. It's a fashion statement. It's a... It's, it's a stamp of approval to be an MCU fan, and that's okay if, you, if you're into following the bear. That's not really my cup of tea. I mean, I watch those films, and I think they're okay. They're a chapterized franchise. But if you think you can MCU, the DCEU, it's not going to work. Now, from what I know, this multiverse strategy is going to be interconnected. There'll be cameos, crossovers, and all of that. But I think there's... I mean, listen, it's interesting the kind of filmmakers they're getting involved as well. And look, it's not the same as the MCU. You can see next year we've got the Batman. That's an all tour. Um, we've got Black Adam, which pretty much is a, is a rock produced movie. And he's getting his own director in. Well, he's not an all tour. So the results of that movie will be very interesting. Success not guaranteed there, but we hope it is successful. Then Flashpoint by Andy Machete who's made two critically acclaimed um, IT movies, it, IT rebooted movies, and people liked the first one more than the second one, we must say that. But he's a very, you know, he's a very good director. Now, as far as I know, he's not writing this movie. It was totally written by Christina Hodgson. Again, someone who really, as far as I know, is not a comic book fan. So that's going to be an interesting result. Then you've got an author in James Wan doing the Aquaman sequel, Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom. So when you see the people making these films, and then we go to Tanashi Coates' written Superman movie. Now, Tanashi does know a lot about superheroes. That's fair enough, and J.J. Abrams is producing that. Um, and we've got Shaz Shazam! Fury of the Gods in 2023. Two movies in movie theatres in 2023 for the DCEU. So I'm thinking they're going to announce a couple of more. 
at DC Fandome. That's what I would imagine, because at the moment, there's lots of stuff being announced for the future of DC on HBO Max, but they haven't announced the full roster for 2023, and they really need to start planning for 2024 as well. And if we don't hear anything for the rest of the cinematic movies for 2023 and 2024 at DC Fandome, I would be really concerned. And this is, you, listen, you need to have a plan. I, I'm not saying that Hamada doesn't have a plan, but we need to hear, they need to be more forthcoming about their plans. Yes, we know there's a multiverse strategy. We know they're going to reboot the universe. But they need to give us more details, like Fake gives the MCU fans details. Fake's always talking. That's the thing. You know, Kevin Fake is always talking to the public. And I think that really, really helps in terms of understanding the plan, understanding the film sometimes as well. I think delving into the multiverse, Fake has tried to explain, explain the multiverse as much as he can to the fans of the MCU, because it will be. It will be confusing to the normie. So I think things like what if is kind of a way of educating the audience to how the multiverse works. The multiverse basically is what if. What if we're on another earth? What if he has green hair instead of red hair? Or what if he's a policeman instead of a criminal? That's the interesting things about the multiverse. So in terms of what DC are doing, they're doing the multiverse too. But I'm wondering how they're going to do this. And we don't, we don't exactly know what the plan is after the flash. So DC Fandom really needs to have Walter Hamada there, other people there explaining what their actual plans are and give a, give us, giving us a slate for 2023 and 2024 and even 2025. This is what Marvel does. They have their phases. It works. Listen, Feig knows how to run a franchise there's no question about that and the dceu has always been behind the plate there and it's interesting actually because snyder is another talker to the public he's always been very transparent with the fans especially his fans so he was always explaining what he wanted to do with the dceu and he wasn't cryptic and neither is fake so i think that was a great element of snyder running the dceu because you do need transparency and I just think that the way he explained Justice League 2, it would have been really, really awesome. And we are kind of in an era where they don't listen to the public. I don't think they always listened to the public 30, 40 years ago, but I think there was more of elements that, you know, this has a... You know, I mean... I mean, I remember in the 80s, um, they used to do shitty sequels, Bleeding Franchises Dry, and they kept, kept on making them, even though they didn't make much money. It was, it, it, it was weird how the industry worked back then. It has changed a bit. I think sometimes they do listen and sometimes they don't listen. I think if they think they're not going to make any money whatsoever, then they will listen. But there is clearly, there's clearly money to be made from the Snyderverse. I don't think anyone can deny it. Now, I don't know what kind of money there is. But you are dealing with a fan base that is willing to clear the fucking shelves of the Snyder Cut DVD, Blu-ray and 4K. Whether, it, whether it's them doing it, whether it's you know the broader audience, it really doesn't matter. Because you're selling them. You're making the money. They're willing to make you money. If you put stuff on HBO Max, they're going to consume it for you again and again and again. And they're going to create conversations about it on social media. They are, should be a studio's wet dream. So it doesn't matter if you think they're toxic, this or the other, but the, the, the ferocious passion they have for Snyder's DCEU and Snyder as a filmmaker has never been seen ever. I don't think any director has this type of fandom. So you take advantage of it. You manipulate it for your own goals. But WB, because, they're, because they battled with Snyder, Snyder fought back and they didn't like it. And one thing they don't like in Hollywood is publicly being exposed. We know that. So there's this kind of thing, well, we don't want to work with this guy anymore, but there's a big fandom out there who wants to see more DC projects, you know, executed by this director. What do I think that means? Well, the people running Warner Brothers Pictures right now are in a very precarious position. And, and let me explain to you why, because there's going to be a new company 
a new company that's buying this studio. And their jobs are not safe. They're not. I don't know if these people will be fired. I know a lot of Snyderverse fans want that to happen, especially Toby Emmerich and Anne Sonoff. I don't know if those people's jobs are safe. It's all about results at the end of the day. But David Zaslav may be focused in coming in and assessing the situation. And I don't know what he thinks about the, um, the Snyderverse, if he even cares about the Snyderverse, if Zach's even you know, gone to him and Discovery directly to plead his case. That might be a reality, because we know that Zach doesn't mess about. So that could have been something that he's done already. And we know the Snyderverse fans, the Restored Snyderverse fans, I've already started writing and emailing Discovery and hashtagging Discovery. So these are all good and positive things. Just do it in a good, positive way because we know there's some fans out there that just don't have any emotional intelligence and you, and you really need that. And I think that's what we had with Release the Snyder Cut. There was a lot of intelligent people, you know, kind of shouting over the not so intelligent people. And I think that's how we got the cut in the end. So. You want to restore the Snyderverse. I've always wanted the Snyderverse restored. I've been very balanced in my views about Snyder's films, Snyder's takes. I've been critical. I've praised him in areas as well. And I think that's important to have a balance in, in all areas. That's what I'm like. But I think, I not I think, I know. I like him as a director. I'm not really interested in his non-DC stuff, although Rebel Moon does excite me because it was supposed to be a Star Wars story. So I'm going to be interested how this works for Netflix. This could uplift them. If they have a really popular kind of Star Warsy franchise from Zack Snyder, this will do Zack Snyder's reputation uh, you know, a great deal of good and theirs. And then if that becomes successful, what chance of restoring the Snyderverse? Well, he still wants to do it. I mean, there's no way with Rebel Moon, he'll be busy on that all year. He wouldn't be able to start Justice League 2 and 3. Well, it, he can't do both in one year, surely. Not even Zack Snyder can do that. But there's no way he could start production on that till 2023. I'm happy to wait, and I'm sure you are as well. Um, but if only they just greenlit this before he got involved with Netflix, we would we would be getting this stuff next year. So it, it's a big shame. But I do, look, at the end of the day, there is an audience for Zack Snyder. There is an audience at DC for the Snyderverse. Even if you don't like Snyder, you know, that's undeniable. And I think, as a, I mean, as a business person as well, and as a creative, I think about it, and I understand how divisive his films can be, but I mean, he does, you know, Justice League 2 and Justice League 3 don't have to be, you know, exclusive HBO Max movies. They can actually go to movie theatres. If you're doing a multiverse, you've got a central universe. His stuff is elsewhere. If you're going to move the central universe away from Snyder's original Earth 1, why can't that Earth remain active for the Snyderverse? You know, I mean, if you think about it and you use your head and not your heart, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So there's definitely a place here for him. And I think once Zaslav comes in and that company comes in, they can think with fresh heads. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to get your hopes up, but I'm just saying they can come in with no hatred and say, right, what's happened here? Right, and it's the same thing with when Sarnoff came in. She looked into it as well. And I think things got a bit complicated because you know, Toby brought in J.J. Abrams, then she swayed towards Toby's side, then it became complicated. The truth of the matter is, and I think Anne Sarnoff is very good at her job, I think Toby Emmerich's not a total disaster, but obviously he will always be remembered for the man who messed around with Zack Snyder's vision. So that's difficult. If it was me, and if I was Discovery, I would wait to set up first, I would leave them there for, for a time to assess it, but I would bring my own people in. I would remove them. I would, I, would I would definitely have a DC Studios, people who understand the graphic novels, these characters, and these universes. But I get, it, I mean, Warner Brothers has needed a clear out for years. It needs a clear out of mentality. I mean, I don't think the mentality at Disney is perfect, but they're lucky in the sense that they've bought up a lot of IPs. Now, Warner Brothers have inherited a lot of IPs. They're IPs that were there for many years. You know, WB of owned DC, even before, you know, Superman 1978 began production. So it's always been in their roadhouse for a very, very long time. 
And it's clear there's money to be made from DC if you run the thing properly. We don't know. Hamada may, may make a great success here. And if he's successful with this multiverse strategy, you know, Zaslav's just going to let him get on with it. But Discovery will probably look at the Snyderverse and say, well, yeah, you're doing that. You know, let Snyder do that and we'll deal with Snyder. We, you don't have to deal, deal with Snyder. But, for example, you know, Zaslav and Discovery could say to Walter Hamada, listen, we don't know what happened, just apologise to Ray Fisher. You know, like when you used to apologise to your mum when you didn't think you were in the wrong. Or you just apologise to your girlfriend just so you can get some that night. I think it's that kind of situation. Just apologise to the kid, man. He's a very talented actor, right? He was trying to do something positive by bringing, you know, Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns to justice for what happened. Because there was a lot of wrongdoing there, as much as I love Jeff Johns as a creative. So, I think... Once Discovery comes in, we can really look at this again, and that company can look at it with fresh eyes. There's no way AT&T can make any decisions because they're, you know when you're ready to go on holiday but you've still got to work for a couple of weeks? I think that's the position AT&T are in. They came in as non-members of the entertainment industry, not having a clue what they were doing, by the way, and it's not worked out that well, but it hasn't been disastrous either. But I don't think the future was ever at and I think they were opportunists. They came in to make some money. And now they're being bought out by Discovery. So they're going to get away with it, basically, because they never knew what they were doing. But considering that, they've done OK. Um, so it's a complicated issue, restoring the Snyderverse. It's no, no question about it. But I think at the end of the day, the best thing that's going to happen to this studio is Discovery. Let's talk about David Zaslav. David Zaslav is the Bob Iger of Discovery. This, I've said this before, Discovery were this. And once he got involved, look at them now. They're one of the biggest broadcasting giants in the world. The acquisition of Warner Brothers, Warner Media, will make Warner Brothers, right? Warner Brothers Discovery, one of the biggest companies in the world. Um, as big as Disney, maybe bigger or just as big or slightly smaller still, but they'll be in a bigger position to compete with Disney. Why? Because of Zaslav. Zaslav is our Bob Iger. What Bob Iger has done by buying up all these IPs is sensational. Buying up Marvel Studios, look what that's done to them, right? Or done for them. Inheriting fake and keeping fake, right? That was genius. So, David Zaslav is a businessman. He will make the best decisions for himself, for his shareholder, and the future of Warner Brothers and Warner Discovery. It's the best thing that could have happened. And the quicker this happens, the better. I, I think the multiverse idea is a really good idea. I don't think you could have continued with Zack Snyder running the Central Universe. And I mean, his idea was for him to do his art, then someone else to come in, then someone else to come in. But it depends who you get in. You do need consistency. The reason the MCU works is because of fake. And that's the thing. You need someone to oversee this. Now, whether it's Hamada or someone else, that's going to be an interesting thing. Because I think even if they remove Hamada when his contract's up, they can bring in DC Studios. And if the strategy is successful, they can still continue it. It may be, even if the multiverse strategy is successful, you know, you know, Hamada and Sarnoff and Emmerich may still be removed, so they can have, as they think, more efficient people working there. Listen, the Ray Fisher, Zack Snyder situation wasn't handled very well. Let's be honest about it, because once Fisher was pushing for this investigation, you knew as a studio, as a company, there's no way you could duck out of it. He was going publicly, right, to pressure As soon as he wanted an investigation, it should have been, yes, Ray. And as soon as he said, I don't want one of your people to do it, it should have been, yes, Ray. He had to pressure them publicly to do these things. It just wasn't handled in the right way. And that's by Jason Keelar and Sarnoff and Toby Emmerich. They didn't handle it. As soon as they restored the Snyderverse, they should have been intelligent enough to understand what that meant. That's why they were avoiding doing it all along. But it was AT&T who restored the Snyderverse, thankfully, and not them. So they knew they were in trouble. That's why they were trying to avoid it at all costs. But it happened. Snyder said his bit. 
Fisher said his bit. That that public execution, that kind of expulsion of secret information could have been avoided if they just said, have your investigation, let's find out what happened, who's at fault, and whoever's at fault for this, we get rid of them. A clean sweep. But they didn't want to remove Jeff Johns. If Jeff Johns is guilty, he has to go. He has to go, he's a great creative, but at the end of the day, you have to go. You can't be saying to the guy publicly pushing for an investigation, why don't you just throw Joss Whedon under the bus? You can't be doing that. And they weren't too smart how they dealt with Ray Fisher. This could have been dealt with. They could have come out publicly saying, Ray Fisher has asked for investigation, and as a company who believes in doing things the right way, we agree. An independent um, company, judiciary company, needs to investigate this, and the guilty parties must be removed from the studio. But they weren't willing to do that. And then Hamada's attitude that Jeff Johns is a good guy and things like that. That wasn't the best way to go at it. So this is why Ray Fisher started to get nasty towards Walter Hamada, even though I didn't like it. Because Hamada wasn't there when the shit went down. Hamada's there to clean up a mess. So it all becomes messy. What, and this is what, it, what you need. Zaslav's already said he's going to go and appeal to people who haven't been treated properly within the industry. I would assume this means Zack Snyder as well. So just bring on Discovery. Bring on them coming in. Cleaning up this shit show of a studio and moving forward. But as I say, finishing off this video for today, as I say, the multiverse strategy is a good one. But you don't incite a multiverse strategy and say, oh, apart from the Snyderverse, something that's incredibly popular, even though I agree it shouldn't be the central thing, but if you're enacting a multiverse, why not bring Snyder in? Snyder's a good guy. All Snyder ever wanted to do was make his vision come true. And I just think the whole thing has been mishandled from the beginning. So fingers crossed, us as DC fans, not just Snyder fans, but all DC fans, can get our happy ending with Zaslav and Discovery. And he can clean up this company and give us a DC extended universe we can be proud of. And that includes restoring the Snyderverse. This has been the DC EU Daily here on Movies TV Mag. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. And I will see you again in the next video. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. Now, I'm not getting my views properly. I'm not getting my likes properly. You're probably not getting your notifications. YouTube is on the fritz. So make sure you have a look for me and make sure you've seen today's version of the DCEU Daily because there's an episode going out to you, you lucky people, every single day. So until tomorrow, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.